Alright, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go ahead and model a realistic combat knife, also known as a K-bar. We're going to do that now in XSI, and we're going to do it pretty detailed. So, let's get started because we got quite a lot of work to do, but fun work. So, let's get to it. Okay, for this one, we're going to use the same method as we did for the bullet. We're going to load up an image in the background, and we're going to model using that image, sort of as a template or a blueprint to model off of. So we're going to use the side view or the right view down here, viewport D, just like we did with the bullet. So let's click over here to our shading options, go to rotoscopy options. And when this PPG opens up, we're going to hit new from file. And you should have an image called knife. It's JPEG. Go ahead and open that up. And there's our image in background. Let's close that PPG. Come over here to our shading options again and click on rotoscope. And there's our image in the background. Perfect. Now we can start modeling this uh, this knife. So let me go ahead and grab this viewport over here. I'm going to grab this border here in the middle and drag over to the left. So we have two viewports here to work off of. Okay, so there's our knife on the bottom. I'm going to hit G on the keyboard to hide the grid. I really don't need to see the grid in my side view. It's not really going to aid me in any way right now. So here is our knife. So how should we build this knife. Well, we could use a cylinder, and it'd probably be a very good bet to use a cylinder. So, let's use a cylinder. Let's go to Primitive, Polygon Mesh, Cylinder, close the PPG. Actually, before we close it, I'm sorry about that, make sure you take the base and the V subdivisions down to 0 and 0. Now close the PPG. Let's switch to Shaded View. Let's move the cylinder down. And we're also going to have to scale it. So let's scale it down to roughly fit our uh, knife back here. I'm going to hit F12 here so I can maximize this view. It makes sense. We are working in this view right now, so why not maximize it? So I'm going to maximize it or bring this cube uh, cylinder, I'm sorry, the cylinder down to about here. Okay, that's not bad. And it doesn't have to be exact like the image. The image is kind of there just as an overall rough uh, helper to, well, to help us model. Okay. So now that we have this cylinder sort of uh, roughly in position, what I'm going to do is hit T on the keyboard to switch to point mode. Select all the points on the top and move those up to about right here. That's where the cylinder piece is going to connect to. And then that part's going to connect to this part, and that part's going to connect to the actual blade itself. And you'll see when we get to that. We're going to kind of do this in two parts. We're going to model first the handle, and then we're going to go ahead and focus exclusively on the, uh, on the blade. So, let's go to edge mode, hitting E on the keyboard. Select all the edges in the middle here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to subdivide edges evenly. There's a reason why I'm doing this. I'm going to subdivide them evenly so I can get a subdivision right here down the middle. I'm going to close that. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to go back to point mode. Select all the points in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to scale them out, making sure that global mode and COG are turned on. So I scale them out to something like that. Now, I want to start to see how this looks in sub Ds. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's hit the plus key on the number pad of the keyboard a few times to turn this into a sub D. Hold control and hit the plus key as well to activate the wireframe uh, cage so we can see what's going on. Now, the way that this knife is, and it's kind of hard to see here, I move that out of the way. The knife is actually a little bit flat right here on the broad side. So we're going to kind of imitate that. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit F12, and let's go back here to the camera viewport. Let's hit G on the keyboard to get rid of the grid and switch it to a shaded view. What we're going to do is we're going to scale this using the blue manipulator or the z-axis to flatten it down a little bit like this. I'm sorry, that was the wrong axis. As you can see, we flatten it down in the wrong direction, or I flatten it down in the wrong direction. Just hit Control z to undo. Let's actually flatten it down in the x-axis or the red manipulator. Okay, that's the correct one. 
flatten down a bit. Not too much, a good amount like that. Uh, looks pretty good. Maybe unflatten that a little bit more. So it shouldn't be perfectly round, but it shouldn't be too flat either. So something like this is probably pretty good. Okay. Either way, later we can flatten it or unflatten it. Doesn't matter. Right now we're just going to go ahead and start working on this thing. So I'm going to select these bottom edges down here. I'm going to hit F12 to maximize this viewport now. Now I'm going to work mainly in the right viewport. I'm going to right click on this object and go to split edges with split control. Move the split all the way toward the bottom, almost touching the bottom, but not quite. Maybe a little bit up like this. Kind of has to have a, a nice groove to it on the bottom. You can see down here it goes down, then it has this nice kind of groove that makes the handle blend into the back of the handle right here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is close that PPG, get rid of it. Let's start to create the details or the grips that go on this handle. But before before I do that, let me hit T on the keyboard to go to point mode. Select these points in the middle. And you can see I need to scale them back out again because I lost some volume when I turned this into a sub D. So I'll scale them out to about that much right there is pretty good. Then I'm going to go to edge mode by hitting E on the keyboard. Select some of these edges like these down here for example. I'm going to right click on them. Now I'm going to go to split edges with split control. I'm going to move this split to about right here is pretty good. Basically what I want to do is move the split so that it's right in the middle of this groove, this indentation in the grip. I want to place a split at every one of those holes. So I'm going to select these edges. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a split there. Move it down to about right there is pretty good. I can see that this one, I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to go to point mode. Select these points. I'm going to move them up a bit because they weren't exactly centered uh, as well as they could have been. I'm going to go back to edge mode. Select these edges. Right click. Split edges with split control. Move the split down to the middle of the hole right there. I'm going to select these edges on the top. Right click. Split these guys with split control and get them in the middle too, right about there. And I'm using the right side as reference. I'm actually ignoring the left side. Okay, and then up here I'm going to select these edges, right click, split edges with split control, and move this split up something like this is pretty good. Okay, not bad. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually create the detail. And it's actually going to be pretty easy to create. Let's go ahead and let's go to edge mode by hitting I on the keyboard here. Edge mode of ray casting. I'm going to select this edge, alt, and middle mouse button click this edge here to select that entire loop. Now what I'm going to do is hold down alt, left click this edge. I'm sorry about that. Alt and hold down shift and left click that edge. Then while still holding Alt and Shift, middle mouse button click this edge. Then hold down Shift, select this edge. Hold down Alt and Shift, middle mouse button click this edge. Hold down Shift, left click this edge. Shift, Alt, and uh, middle mouse button click this edge. I'm sorry about that. Shift, select this edge. Shift, Alt, and middle mouse button click this edge. And we didn't get the whole loop right there. Let's try that again. Shift and select this edge. Shift Alt, middle mouse button, click that edge. There we go, now we got it. So as long as you select those loops of edges, you're fine. And let me hit F12, let me go here in my camera viewport, rotate around, and we'll see that yes, I do have all the correct edges selected. So let's go back to this view. Let me close that PPG. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to Bevel Components. And you can see now that we have a nice bevel right there. I'm going to change the size of the bevel so it could be something like the holes. And right there is pretty good. Basically get the width of the holes on the right side. Which I was able to do pretty easily right there. Okay, not bad. Let's close that PPG window. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and switch to polygon ray casting mode. Go ahead and select 
this polygon, alt the middle mouse button, click that polygon. And then what we're going to do is shift, left click that polygon, shift, alt, middle mouse button, click this one. Hold on, shift and select this polygon, shift, alt, middle mouse button, click that polygon. Shift and select this polygon, shift, the middle mouse button, click that polygon. It may seem tedious, but when you get used to it, it's actually really fast as you can see. Okay, excellent. Now we have those polygons selected. What I'm going to do is hit Control D on the keyboard to extrude. I'm going to activate the Move tool this time. And what I'm going to do is switch to Local Mode and take COG off. Then I'm going to go over here to where it says Transform. I'm going to left click there. And I want to make sure that this option, Transform Components Independently in Local Mode, is checked on. Now what I can do is move this with this green arrow 